What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I'm going to talk about what's going on with Apple and Amazon, break down their earnings for you guys, then talk about other important sectors. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the market for tomorrow as we have some data in the morning. But before I do anything like this, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon in just about two weeks, so check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So what's going on with the markets? We had some big earnings that just came out. In terms of EPS and revenue, most of them were actually beats, but EPS and revenue is not everything for the market. You have to remember that we have to look at specific details for every single one of these earnings. And looking at Apple, some sectors were not looking too strong for them. And that's part of why Apple is declining. So I'm going to break this down in more detail in just a few minutes. But first, we have to talk about some other earnings out there so to start us off right amazon is currently up quite nicely trying to pump i think it says it right here they did very very well when it comes to their earnings and their guidance is quite nice apple however is actually down is continuing to sell off because their earnings Overall, they beat on EPS and revenue, but their expectations for the next quarter are not the strongest. And we did see some declines in different sectors for their revenue. That is part of why it wasn't that great. Uh, once again, we did see a sales decrease in September as well. And uh, it's very important to note this. This is you know continuing to cause Apple to sell off. For others out there, we saw, for example, like booking uh, holdings, it's actually up about 9%. A couple of others are up quite nicely. Airbnb is down. Coinbase is very flat. And Drop Dropbox is basically up about 3%. So kind of mixed all over the place. Most of them are trying to go up. But the bigger two are going to be Apple and Amazon. With one of them dropping, one of them pumping quite nicely, it's going to be very interesting to witness which one has the bigger impact for tomorrow. Now, for the specific details about Amazon, okay, their net sales were $134 billion, beating the expectation of about $131 billion. So nice job from Amazon beating on EPS as well. Web services was a beat for them. They beat, they beat on operating margins. They ended up beating on operating income. It just beats all over the place for them. But one of the biggest factors was this. Their Q3 net sales outlook is $138 to $143 billion dollars versus the 138 billion estimation so that's bullish news for them they're expecting another good quarter for q3 in terms of their net sales and that once again is going to help this thing continue to hold up that's part of why amazon is holding up quite nicely the guidance the outlook is quite good now when it comes to apple however Apple beat on EPS, which is great. They beat on revenue, which is awesome. But the iPhone revenue is down 2% year over year, missing what the estimation was. Mac revenue is down 7% year over year, but it did beat the estimation. iPad revenue is down 20% year over year, which is not good. And this was below what the expectation was. And besides that, the other product revenue is also a little bit lower than the expectation, but up 2% year over year. So the majority of these have been uh, decent, but some things are not too good, such as the iPad revenue right now, the iPhone revenue. Services revenue was a beat, and this helped to actually offset this loss. This is how they were actually able to beat on EPS and revenue, thanks to the services revenue. But their gross margin was still quite decent at 44.5%. So now I want to add on that for tomorrow, we also have the unemployment data coming out. We want 3.6% flat on the board. We want 3.6% or something like that. It could be either that or higher. I doubt it's going to be much lower looking at how things have been going so far. It's going to be very close. So we're, we're going to see what happens to this in the morning. And that's about it for the data. After that, it's just going to be a reaction by big tech. So now let's talk about how the market is doing. How are things looking? Well, just as a reminder, okay. Apple right now is continuing to sell off, testing this 185 support. This is the support on Apple. It's down 2.8% in the after hours, continuing to sell off. Apple also mentioned that some of their uh, sectors are going to be seeing accelerated growth for Q3, such as the iPhone and other sectors. But iPad and Mac revenues are expected to decline in the double digits, unfortunately. That was bearish news that came out. And that's part of why we ended up seeing, you know, Apple selling off the way it has been. So some declines are expected, but overall their EPS and revenue is not expected to be like too bad. But because some sectors are slowing down, this is not the best news for investors. So for that reason, Apple is continuing to sell off. It's now down like 2.8%, looking relatively weak. This is going to lead to downwards pressure for the markets for tomorrow. 
the market could slow down because of Apple. However, we also have bullish stuff coming on. And that's from Amazon. Amazon has a bullish structure developing. This is forming like a bullish wedge right over here. And Amazon is testing this 140 area. Now, remember that Amazon ended up announcing that they're expecting strong, strong, strong amounts of net sales for the next quarter. That is bullish news for them. Guidance has been quite good for them. And they ended up beating on basically everything, basically everything that's significant at the very least. So good news for Amazon. We're going to be expecting this to help the market for tomorrow. But <coughs> excuse me, but but uh, Apple is going to do the opposite and actually slow the market down a bit. So we're going to be watching which one is going to have the bigger effect, which one is more likely to uh, impact the markets. Honestly, guys, it depends on how much Apple ends up continuing to drop, how much more Apple drops, because we could still see a lot more selling pressure as lots of money was waiting uh, both on the sidelines and also waiting to exit if they had to. So it's kind of in the middle. The best thing to do is just watch this on a level level basis, and we'll see what happens in the pre-market. I need to see that first before giving you guys a really, really in-depth analysis. So if the market starts to like pump a little bit, thanks to Amazon, we're going to be watching this resistance around this 449.5 area to about this 450 zone. But if Apple ends up being the bigger thing to drag the market down, we're going to be watching 448.5 as our support. And below that, we have the low from today going all the way down to 447.5 or even lower levels than that. And if that fails us, then the 446 gap fill is a possibility. So what do I think is more likely? However, I just want to mention that there's both a bull and bear case. It's just that it's hard to predict this right now because we have two tech giants going in opposite directions. We have Apple trying to drop uh, drop the markets, whereas Amazon is the one that's trying to hold the market up. It's just in the middle. And I just have to wait and see the pre-market first. I think that we're going to see lots of uh, action in both dr directions because of this. Lots of like sideways price action because of it. And one of them will be the bigger factor. One of them is going to cause a bigger move. I think that Apple tends to be more impactful than Amazon, but Amazon is pumping a lot more than Apple is dropping. So like I said, it's very, very much in the middle. A spy is currently just very flat right now going back and forth. We will see which direction dictates by tomorrow morning. For Tesla, the bulls want to see Tesla break 260. The bears want to see it break below 257 and come all the way back down to 255. Right now, from a technical standpoint, it's looking more bullish, forming this nice looking uh, bullish wedge. However, the thing about Tesla is it's going to be more impacted by, you know, the big earnings as well. And so far, it's trying to hold up. So I'm going to be watching to see if Tesla could try to break 260 for tomorrow. It's been outperforming again. Uh, and we will see if it can make its way up to 262. I'm leaning a little bit more in that direction, but overall, it's looking kind of sideways. It's only up like 0.04% right now. So it's very flat. The market is just super, super flat right now as we're still waiting for you know, big tech to make a much larger move and see which one dictates the direction. Now, the QQQ ended up selling off just a little bit. It's down 0.04%, very flat. It's looking a little weaker than SPY. So I, I'm anticipating something like that to happen because of the fact that Apple has a bigger weight. Uh, we might see it retest like 374 and drop a little lower. We could see it come all the way down to about 372 and then try to balance. But this is going to depend on a bunch of different factors. We're still waiting for that, but it is looking a little bit weaker. It looks like we could see a retest of 372, and we'll see if that ends up breaking or not. For NVIDIA, we're going to be watching to see if NVIDIA could try to hold 444. If it breaks this support, you're going to be watching 443 basically break as well. It would come all the way down to where this 442 support is. It's actually kind of tight right here. If that fails us, then 440 is a possibility, then 436. If we're bullish, we're going to be watching 450 on the video. If that breaks, there's 452.5, 455, and then potentially even 460 if we continue to break out. We are very flat right now, waiting for a reaction from the markets because the QQQ is looking a little weak. This could lead to some downward pressure for a retest of like 440. But just to be safe, we're going to be watching the pre market for more confirmation. Then to add on to this, I'm going to try to make this one kind of quick because there's a lot to go over. The dollar is kind of flat, not really doing anything too significant or giving us any like more insights about how things are going to be going. Uh, AMD is a little bit red as well. We're going to be watching this one 12 area as major support and the 5 minute 200 EMA. If that breaks, there's 109 and 107 for resistance watch 115 or so. 
Finally, when it comes to Coinbase, Coinbase had its earnings. It's actually very flat right now, going back and forth and back and forth. The bulls want to see this thing pump all the way above 97.5 to get to 100. The bears want to see it break below 86 and fill its imbalance down around the 80 area. So far, it's kind of flat. It's looking a little weak, though, as it's breaking below this 90 support. So it's looking a little bit weaker. We will see which way it breaks by the time we open tomorrow and if there's any other pieces of news. Now, Amazon, like I mentioned before, is continuing to break down. We're going to be watching a break of 140, and 145 becomes a possibility. It's still holding up. looks very bullish so far. This entire structure looks nice, but the one that's weak right now is Apple. Let's just see Apple one more time. Apple is still testing 185, not looking that great, unfortunately. So like I said before, it's kind of like a tug of war. One of these is going to be dragging the market down. The other one's trying to drag the market up. Uh, we will see which one prevails as the bigger uh, stock to impact the markets. I'm still kind of in the middle, but you know, Apple does have a bigger weight, but it's not dropping as hard as Amazon is pumping. So that's the reason why I'm still kind of in the middle for a lot of these. Meta is still looking kind of weak uh, because of how the QQQ was looking a little weak as well. The QQQ is more weighted by Apple than Amazon. If it breaks below 312, we're going to be watching this thing retest 310 or so. And I think we might see a very choppy day tomorrow around these levels. Nothing too crazy. So we'll have to wait and see. So far, the market looks like it may see lots of sideways price action. Most stocks are kind of flat still. We're just waiting for uh, our reactions. And the best thing to do is just watch support and resistance. I will talk more about the reaction in the pre-market. And the best thing to do is to just be as patient as possible in this wild market. All right, so we'll see what happens uh, by tomorrow morning when Apple and Amazon end up opening. And this will give us much more insight about how the stocks are looking. They need a little bit more time to like base and like kind of take in what is being said so far during the earnings call. That's the reason why I'm just going to be patient with this. And I will talk more about this tomorrow morning. All right, thank you for listening. Have a great day, everyone. I'm in calm, cool, and collected. And don't forget, we have some unemployment numbers coming out in the morning. I will talk about these as well because this will impact the markets moving forward. All right. Have a good one. Market to the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright despite the short term fluctuations. And peace out.